If you give me just 10 minutes, I'll show you how to protect a software-defined data center using VSEC from Checkpoint Software Technologies. Let's start by defining a software-defined data center since it's more than just the virtual machines. Virtual machines are delivered and supported from physical server hosts that also include a virtual network controller called NSX that complements virtual service offerings by also dynamically providing network access for the virtual machines. We use the vSphere Web Management Tool to take a look inside and understand the vCenter and how it's configured. Running on the ESXi server is a service VM called a Checkpoint Service. This is the security gateway or inspection point that resides upon each of the hosts within an ESX cluster. Whenever a new ESX host is added to a cluster, the vSEC service is auto-deployed to ensure that everything is protected within the cluster. Now, even though the service VM is deployed, it will have no effect on any of the data center traffic until we do some service redirection through the virtual network provided by NSX. In the vCenter, under Network and Security, the service composer is where we will build our security policy to redirect traffic. The policy we create in the service composer allows us to redirect network level traffic through the network introspection service and through a couple simple rules. These rules tell the virtual network to redirect the specific traffic to any services offered by service VMs on the hosts. In this case, we are directing to a checkpoint service VM that we looked at earlier. The rule is set up so that if there's any traffic that's coming from a security group within the NSX, we're going to redirect it to the checkpoint service. We are also redirecting any traffic that is destined for the virtual machine groups, and this essentially forces all of the network level traffic to be automatically redirected to the Checkpoint Service VM for inspection and application and policy controls. Please note that you could select just specific groups for a first deployment. That makes it easy to test and evaluate before choosing to implement on production traffic. Also under the Service Composer are the security groups we just referenced in our policy and can be defined by templates and conditions that auto add virtual machines to the appropriate group when they're created. Here we see some of the groups available, including a database group that hosts a virtual machine acting as our test database server, as well as a web group that contains our example web server. We can utilize these dynamic groups on our centralized checkpoint management server through a component called the VSEC controller that is connected to both the vCenter as well as the NSX. This gives us the ability to use dynamic group objects in policy and is continually learning and adapting to update changes in the virtual environment through this VSEC controller. Let's see what this looks like on the security management server, which can actually now present us two data center objects that are connections both to the vCenter and the NSX controller. Uh, it should be noted that you could actually just connect to vCenter if you didn't have an NSX controller just to get the dynamic objects that are being created. But for this overall demo, we're gonna be using both functions. Uh, this is now connected and able to speak uh, in real time to both the vCenter and the NSX. It's now possible to create a special kind of group based on the data center objects that we're connected to. And this allows us to define group or object information that we're learning from the vCenter or the NSX rather than having to create the objects locally. The vCenter is sharing object information about the virtual machines and services available within the cluster. There's our uh, test web server that we were looking at earlier on the uh, vCenter server. But we also have access to the NSX groups we looked at earlier. Remember these things? Well, they're here for us now in our security management policy. Using the data center group objects from the NSX, we've created a policy rule that allows anyone to access virtual machines in the web group through standard HTTP, HTTPS, as well as HTTP on port 8080. If we open a browser on our desktop and access the web server on the allowed port, we can access the test page and see it without issue. And you can see this access in the security logs, along with the virtual machine information from vCenter and the group information from NSX. So you have logs that actually make sense in a virtual environment. And just to show you that policy is being enforced, we're going to try an SSH to the web server, which of course is not allowed in any of the rules. And as you can see, we're blocked and logged accordingly. Object to group information is always included in the log so that you're able to properly trace back to the original virtual machine. Now let's simulate and test traffic more like a data center would handle. And to do that, we're going to log into the console of our web server and start initiating some communications that you'd see within a data center and between virtual servers. As you can see, the IP address of the virtual machine is 10.0.0.101 with a very large net mask, meaning everything in a traditional physical data center would be able to see each other and talk to each other unless it was carefully chopped up with VLANs or physical segmentation. A simple ping test from the web server tells us the database is up and running and waiting for us.
We can also see the ping test happening in our security logs. The virtual machines are up and running and we're able to see all the traffic passing between them. Let's run a database query from the web server back to the database server and see what happens. And as you can see, database traffic from the web server to the database is allowed and logged according to policy. Now let's try something we don't like to allow, say someone on the web server attempting to access the database server through SSH. Back on our management station, we can see that this is not allowed and has been dropped due to policy. Now all of this so far is typical of server segmentation in any data center. Let's explore the dynamic nature of a software-defined data center. Like for example, if a server providing services was to change its IP, what happens next? On the vCenter, changes to the VM are detected and updated. This information in turn is propagated to the vSec controller on the management station that updates all physical and virtual gateways about the new IP address on the web server. This allows our newly addressed virtual machine to continue offering the same services associated with the web group, and the logs will show detail down to the new IP address in use. Reverting back to the original IP also has the same effect with the VSEC controller and subsequent gateways learning the new IP address yet again. The services between web and database VMs continue to flow as expected by policy. So virtual machines are typically deployed based on a template. So what would happen if a template deployment of a web server was violated? In this example, we did not follow the naming convention and just brought up a generic server. Let's rename our virtual server to generic server and see how the network and the security treat it. The change is propagated to the VSEC controller and our former web server now is actually removed from the web server group. Now when our VM formerly known as the web server tries to access the SQL service, it's dynamically blocked without a change or push in policy. Now let's get some more advanced inspection going. We have here in our policy a rule that quarantines servers that are in the infected VM group by preventing all traffic from accessing or leaving any VM identified in this group. Back in our web server, we're going to initiate traffic that is inspected and identified to be malicious in nature. Not only is the malicious traffic blocked, but the web server is now updated to be in the infected VM group, so even though the database services are allowed just a moment ago, the web server is now blocked from propagating on any service in the network, as it is now identified as an infected machine. Now, hey, wait a minute, you should be asking yourself, how did it end up in the infected VM group? And that's because VMs are put in this group if they are tagged as data security risks. If we check back in our vCenter, sure enough, here's our web server and it is listed in the infected VM group. But how does it get there? Turns out it's actually there because it's put in this group if you're tagged as a data security risk. And sure enough, when we look closer, we see that we have been tagged. The VSEC controller does not just accept information, but can send information to the NSX controller, allowing security incidents to be acted on in an automated fashion. If we log into our security management station and take a look at the VSEC controller configuration, you'll notice that we actually have the ability to send tags. These tags tell the vCenter that there's something at risk, and it allows it to put it in the infected VM group, which could include redirection to other services for forensic analysis or cleaning of the system that allows the tag to be removed and the system to be put back into production. So let's put this thing back in production. Let's say we cleaned it and got it reinitialized or reimaged. Once the tag's removed, the web server is actually allowed to resume all normal operations. Our web server VM is removed from the infected VM group and goes back to normal service operation, access, and of course all this logged and tracked. The ability to identify malicious traffic and tag infected virtual machines is not limited to the VSEC service gateway, but can also leverage physical gateways throughout the environment through the VSEC controller. And since we centrally manage all the security activity, the same tools that provide analysis and alerting today for any of your checkpoint physical deployment will obviously incorporate the VSEC security as well. So if you're interested in a holistic overall security policy and monitoring that easily secures the virtual data center at an atomic level while ensuring the policy extends to traditional physical infrastructure, come have a look at the VSEC gateway. And that's my 10 minutes. Hope this helped.